Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. You know, it's impossible to be a success if you don't know what success is, okay? I want you to picture the most successful person you know in your mind, whether they're alive now or whether they've already passed on. Picture the most successful person you know. You know, maybe you have a mentor or a role model in mind, somebody uh, you're striving to be like, Somebody who maybe has overcome things that you're going through. And, and, you know, I think we can all picture somebody who's more successful than us. You know, somebody that we can use as a guide to help um, ourselves become more successful. But uh, hold on for a second. I want you to ask yourself, why did, why did you choose this person? You know, what is it about them that made you choose them? Like, why do you think that they're a success? You know, the reason I ask this question is because it's going to reveal how you define success. And so the whole reason and the whole point I'm making this video today is because, you know, there's a lot of people out here today chasing success, you know, chasing success the wrong way, you know, as a, and as a result, people are getting hurt, okay? Myself included, myself included, you know, I'm not going to sit up here on my high horse and, and tell you guys that, you know, um, that I will never chase the wrong thing and hurt people, you know, I end up hurting people because I'm chasing things that I shouldn't be. Now, now that said, I don't want to hurt people anymore, you know, and, and, and I, you know, I want to hurt people as little as I possibly can. And, and, you know, I don't want people to hurt me either. You know, and I'm sure you guys watching this video, you don't want me hurting you and you don't want to be hurt by other people. So, you know, keep, keep, Keep this. Keep in mind through the rest of this video that the whole point I'm preaching this message is to help all of us, you know, avoid hurting each other, basically, you know, and, and help spread peace and love in the world, okay? So that being said, it's impossible to be a success if you don't know what success even is, right? So let's, let's take a look at this. Um, if you're anything like me, you know, you grew up in America... And you were raised with certain expectations, um, certain criteria for you th to live by, and certain standards that you should meet or be expected of to be considered a successful person or a successful citizen. You know, it, it can start very early in life. Um, uh, when you go to first grade and you pass first grade and, and you're on to second grade, you know, um, everybody's going to tell you, you're a success. Good job. Well done. You, you've, you've passed first grade on to second grade and they're going to give you positive reinforcement. You know, everybody's going to praise you and, and acknowledge your achievement. Hey, you've passed first grade. Success. You're on your way. You know, then you graduate from grade school into middle school and, and people will positively reinforce you again. Tell you, good job. Success. You're on your way. You know, we've been conditioned to believe that, you know, everybody's praising me, everybody's acknowledging me. Therefore, I must be doing something right, right? I must be on my way to success, you know? Because who doesn't like, you know, getting a pat on the shoulder and saying, good job, you're doing good, right? You know, nobody likes to get a spanking or get punished, you know? So, so you know, we continue through life this way because everybody's patting us on the back and saying, good job. You know, you go from middle school to high school and you and you get and you graduate and you get cer your certificate and and, you know, we're even told, hey, if you want more recognition and you want more praise and you want to get rewarded and get and get more money and uh, status, you know, you need. And if you want to stand out from the crowd, go to college, go to college and, and get it, get a degree, get a bachelor's, um, get a master's, get a doctorate, you know. The higher you go, the more you succeed, you know, and, 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 and they tell you, hey, success is uh, having a good career, a good paying job, um, getting married, um, uh, obeying the laws of the government, being a good tax paying citizen. These are things that a successful person does. You know, the whole journey of achieving success can be summed up by one term, the American dream, the American dream, you know. Those of us who were born here, we were taught to strive for it, strive for the American dream. And, and you know, some people migrate from, from other countries in, in, in hopes of attaining what? The American dream. 
You know, it's, it's supposed to be a country where, you know, anybody can come over here and, and dream big. Dream big. Set your goals high. Aim for the stars. And, and achieve whatever you set your mind to. This is the American dream, you know? Success. But, you know, society, they're not going to praise you for achieving certain dreams, right? Like, like if your dream is, I, I want to be... Um, I want to be a drug dealer, you know, no, no, society will say, no, we're going to prohibit you from doing that, you can't have that dream, okay, and there are certain other goals that, that you can strive for that will, society will say, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but we're, we're not really going to reward you for that, um, if you, if you go after that dream, well, uh, you're on your own, there, you know, for example, let's say you have the dream of being the most charitable person, the most generous giving person um our culture is not really gonna pay you for that they're not gonna recognize you for that you're not gonna get popular or famous for being the most generous person you're just not you know um but what does our society praise you know what do, what do people get famous for and recognized for think of all the famous people you know they're they're musicians they're actors they're um, professional athletes. They're entertainers. These are the people who are put in the spotlight. These are the people who are getting noticed and recognized and, and getting paid and rewarded for their achievement. And, 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 and our society says, these are, these are successful people. You know, because us, us humans, you know, what do we respond to? We respond to positive reinforcement and, and negative reinforcement, you know. Um, our actions are based on whether we're getting punished or rewarded, whether we're getting praised by our friends or whether we're getting demonized for them, right? Meaning, so like, if you're getting paid a lot of money for doing something, uh, a person tends to think, oh, well, this must be successful. I'm getting paid for this, right? You know, it, we, we could see it on social media. Let me give you an example. And, uh, you know, like, let's say you take a woman, a young woman, who's a, who's a fair looking young lady and 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 she starts revealing her body to the whole world she posts herself up on social media sexual pictures and 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 men what do they do they they flock to this and and like flies flock to trash right and they they'll give her a thumbs up and they'll give her a good they'll give her a a, a whistle or 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 you know they'll give her a little heart and say oh man you're so pretty you know so it, you could see how it's over the course of time, you know, this woman, it's hard for her to realize that what she's doing wrong. Why? Because society is positively reinforcing her. You know, maybe they're even paying her to uh, show her body off. You know, she's getting so much attention from showing her body off that society is kind of conditioning her uh, based on positive reinforcement that, you know, this is good behavior. That you're, you're a success. You know, everybody's giving you attention. Because remember, we're all raised to, to strive for that American dream. So, so if she's getting paid for this, she's thinking, oh, I'm becoming successful, right? You have a lot of money. You have a lot of free time. You know, these are, these are attributes that can sum up uh, what the American dream is. You know, you have a lot of free time. You make money. Um, you're popular. Um, uh, you're socially accepted. You know, not to say that you need to be famous, like world worldwide, but you know, generally you have a group of friends um, who approve of you. But, but what do we see in society now? You know, things that were considered unacceptable, unsuccessful in the past, like like having multiple sexual partners, like um, being homosexual, um, single mothers, uh, um, uh, ha having a child out of wedlock, things like this. Our, our society is starting to embrace and, and say, no, yo, you can still be accepted. You could still be success, considered a success, even if you do these things. You know, my point is that, you know, we've all been sold this American dream and, and, and what success is. And, you know, it even changes, you know, from time to time, you know, from generation to generation. And if nothing else... What I'd like to do today is get you to question, you know, is that really a success? You know, because I'm going to argue that this American dream that you've been sold, that we've all been sold, has been a lie. A complete lie. You know, Sean, why would you say that? You know, you just don't want me to achieve my dreams. You, 
<laughs> is that what you're saying? No, look, that's not what I'm saying. Look, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that you have to give up your goals. I'm not saying that if you want to be a, a great athlete, if you want to be a doctor or, or a musician or anything like that, you know, I'm not saying you have to give that up. What I'm saying is you have to pro prioritize what truly is important and question if becoming that thing is really a success, you know, whether it be rich or famous or whatever. Our version of success needs to be an accurate version of success because remember, if, if it's impossible to be a success if you don't know what a success is, okay? So, Sean, what are you talking about? What, what, you know, are you telling me that having money and being socially acceptable is a bad thing? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is these are things that we shouldn't measure our success by, okay? Okay, Sean, I'll bite. According to you, what is your definition of success? How should we measure success? Okay. Let me read from you a short scripture out of the King James Bible. From the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 5 through 23. Okay, so I'm going to read this for a sec. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, they're asking Jesus, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with, the unwashing, with unwashing hands? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Well, hath, hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold to the tradition of men, as ye washing of pots and cups and many other such things that they do, or that things you do, and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And whoso curseth, curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father and mother, It is Corban, this is to say a gift, or whatsoever uh, thou mightest be prophesied by me, he shall be free, profited by me, sorry, he shall be free. And ye, shall, and ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect, through your tradition which you have delivered. And many such like things do ye. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand, there is nothing from without a man that entereth into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house of the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drop, purging all meat. And he said, That which cometh out of the man defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceedeth evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasc lasciviousness, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within that defile the man. Word of the Lord. Oh. Okay. Um, what can we learn from this passage? You know, Jesus was teaching that the Pharisees were following the traditions of men above the uh, commandments of God, you know. In other words, they were thinking, you know, we need to follow the tradition to be a success. And Jesus was saying, no, you need to forget about your tradition. You're, 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 you're prioritizing those traditions too much, you know. You know, in verse 8, the Bible says, Jesus said, For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold to the traditions of men. You know, a lot of the times we still in, in our generation, you know, we lay aside the commandments of God. 
to chase dreams, um, to follow in traditions of men, to follow uh, people, mentors, and, and, and role models, you know? And, and we do things out of tradition, you know? Everybody goes to school and goes to college, you know? It's tradition. Um, and that's not to say that we, we can't strive for certain things, but, you know, we do that at the expense of following the commandments. You know, we, we put we put the commandments on the back burner and, and we follow the tradition instead, right? If you look at verse 21, he says, From within, out of the hearts of men proceedeth evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, you know, all these things, pride. You know, Jesus is warning us that the most important thing that we need to be striving for is obeying the commandments. You know, think about it. How much pain would you spare other people if you didn't have any evil thoughts anymore? Or if you didn't commit adultery or, or fornicate with, you know, people who aren't your husband or your wife, you know? Or steal from people or just, or just be prideful and think that you're better than other people. You know, look. I consider Jesus of Nazareth the most successful man to have ever walked this earth. You know? Why? You know, because he wasn't living for material gain. He was living to not hurt other people. You know, he was obeying the commandments, which allowed him to achieve that. You know, the commandments in the Bible, you know, that he lived, that he followed, and he taught other people to do the same were a result or, or you know resulted in him loving others instead of hurting them he didn't hurt anybody he never hurt anybody because he never lied never cheated from anybody he never um did any wrong you know now you know he didn't tell anybody hey it's wrong if you want a beautiful wife but you know what he was saying is you know that shouldn't be your priority in life you know to want money to want material things you know our priority in life what jesus taught is is, you know, how well do you follow this book? How well do you follow the commandments? You know, success for Jesus was being able to say, hey, I, I follow the commandments of God, you know? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. No, I have not come to destroy, to destroy but to fulfill. You know, meaning he not only defended the commandments, but he wasn't a hypocrite, you know? He actually practiced what he preached when he told people hey don't murder don't steal well he didn't murder or he didn't steal you know how many how many people can even today just name all of the 10 commandments let alone keep all the 10 commandments right what are the 10 commandments uh you know that thou, uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me um Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Thou shalt not make no graven images. Um, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Uh, uh, honor your father and mother. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Um, thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's possessions. You know, these are the basic Ten Commandments that, that we ought to live by basic laws that tell us how we're supposed to live our lives, you know, and, and, and just because there's no praise of men, you know, when you do these things, you know, there's no positive reinforcement all the time, you know, you're not, you're not going to get paid for following these laws, you know, no, no, nobody I know is out there employing people to follow these laws, and, and in most situations, you're not going to get punished for breaking these laws either, you know, maybe a few, like, don't murder, and don't, and don't steal, you know, we, we punish people for stuff like that. Um, but but basically what I'm saying is society is not conditioning people to follow these laws. You know, they're not conditioning people that, hey, this is a successful person, you know. I mean, when's the last time you recognize somebody for their obedience to following the commandments of the Bible? Crickets, right? <laughs> I mean, when people get caught for stealing and, and, and killing people, yeah, okay, they'll get punished. But, you know, when's the last time you got punished for, or you saw somebody get punished for committing adultery? Okay. In fact, uh, if a woman divorces her husband and goes and sleeps with another man, 
she she's she's almost rewarded like you go girl you drop that zero and get yourself a hero right like when's the last time somebody got got punished or you punished somebody for for coveting their neighbor's possessions i mean or 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 for not putting god's first or or taking the lord's name in vain you know it's it's laughable you know our our culture literally allows you to worship whatever god you want and it's supposed to be acceptable you know um, you want to worship the God of money? You want to worship money? Go for it, you know? Live your American dream. You want to praise some scientist or some athlete instead of God? Go ahead, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's what our culture teaches. You know, look, I'm not saying that we should punish people for not following the commandments. That's not what I'm saying here, you know? God doesn't want to force, he doesn't want us to force people to obey the commandments. You know, he wants to give people free will. That's, at the same time, you know, that's not to say that we should give people a license to do this stuff, but, you know, God's not pleased when we don't do these things, you know, because they hurt other people, you know, and, and, and they hurt our relationship with God. And, you know, remember, God created everybody. He created, he created all of us, you know, he created all things. You know, Jesus died for everybody. He died for you. And you know that person who, who cheated on you or that, uh, that person who, who broke your heart or, or stole something from you? You know, guess what? Jesus died for them too. You know, he created them too, you know. Uh, so what I'm saying here is, is, is if we want to be successful, we need to understand what success is. Because it's impossible to be a success if you don't know what success is. So... We have to understand that we won't always get rewarded. We won't always get the praise of men when we follow the commandments of the Bible. You know, and, and we won't always get punished when we fail either. You know, and vice versa. See how that works? So, you're not going to get necessarily paid money, material things in this life for being a success. A true success for following the commandments. You know, that's why being a Christian is hard. You know, because... The Christian life is not easy. You know, there's no glory or there's no fame. You're not going to become famous for following the commandments, you know. You're not going to be recognized. You're not going to be paid. You won't be popular. You won't be famous, you know. Just just look at my videos, you know. When I preach to people to obey the commandments, downvote, downvote this guy, you know. Get this guy out of here, right? You know, so God's not going to, you know, but, or excuse me, God is going to reward us in the afterlife for, for obeying the commandments, God is going to be pleased with us. So, you know, I, I don't want you guys to get it twisted and say that there's no reward at all. But, you know, and also I don't want you to get it twisted that, you know, God's saying that, hey, if you don't obey the commandments, I'm sending you to hell. You know, that's not how God operates either. Remember, he gives us free will, you know. Going to heaven and being with the Lord after you die is a free gift. You know, nobody's going to go to heaven one day and say, Oh, wow, I obeyed the commandments so great. I'm a huge success. I made it to heaven. <laughs> no, salvation, going to heaven is a free gift. That's free. Anybody who goes to heaven is only going to get there because they acknowledge, Hey, I'm a sinner. I break the commandments. I am not Jesus. I am not perfect. That's why I need Jesus. I need to believe in Jesus. I need to accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice, his 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 uh, his shed blood on the cross, you know, as an atonement for my sins, you know, because nobody in heaven's going to be bragging about how good they were and 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 how um, uh, perfect they obeyed the commandments, you know, and, and oh, I, I obeyed them better than you. That's why I'm in heaven and you're in hell. No, nobody's going to do that. The only people who go to heaven are humble people. Who, who, who get down on their knees and, 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 and beg the Lord to save them and say, Lord, uh, please forgive me my sins. You know, I need, I need you. I need you to save me. Okay. So I, I'm not going to get into the whole, to that whole um, salvation thing right now. But what I want to say is this, Sean, you're saying, okay, so if we don't have to obey the commandments to go to heaven, and, and, and society is not going to uh, reward me for it. Why did Jesus preach that it's so important, you know? Why is it con considered something, uh, why is somebody considered a success for obeying the commandments? You know, why should we strive to do this? Because like I said, 
Remember, we are all God's creation. Every single one of us, you know, and, and following these commandments is a way of expressing our gratitude towards God for creating us, for creating all things and showing us how grateful for we are for, for life, you know, and, 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 and instead of being selfish and unthankful and, and, and committing sin and breaking these commandments, you know, because every time we sin and we break a commandment, it hurts somebody, whether it hurts ourselves or it, or it hurts our relationship with God or it hurts our, uh, somebody else, you know, I want you to consider this, Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. This is what God said to Jesus Christ, right? He said, Matthew 3, 17, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You know, God acknowledged Jesus was a success. You know? Did society acknowledge Jesus as a success? You know? No. No, they didn't. They killed him. They hung, they hung him on a cross and beat him with a whip and, and made fun of him and mocked him. You know, was Jesus rich? Did he get paid for following the command? No, he didn't. He didn't. But you know what? God still said, you know what? This is my son who I am well pleased with. He's a success. Why? Because he obeyed the commandments. He, he, he perfectly never broke a commandment. You know, so in closing, what can I say? Well, it's impossible to be a success if you don't know what success is. So I want you to consider the works of Jesus. He never hurt anybody. You know, society mocked him and eventually killed him. But God said, you're a success. And, and where is he now? He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. For all eternity. He's the king of kings. He's the ultimate success. You know, we were sold this American dream that, you know, you're not a success unless you have money. You're not a success unless you're accepted by society. Or you're, you're not a success unless you're married and have children, you know, whatever. But remember, Jesus, he never stole anything, never hurt anybody. He never even looked at a woman with, with a selfish desire in his heart of lust, you know. Never selfishly took or stole anything from anybody. You know, he lived his life and only gave to people. He helped people. He healed them. You know, and, and he was a success, you know. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, so even though we sinned and we hurt other people, Jesus, what did he do in return for us? He still loved us. He still died for us. You know, he still he said, I'm still going to bring you to heaven if you believe in me, if you trust me, if you have faith that I will do that, if you have faith that I love you enough to do that. So, in closing, what is a successful person, you know? Well, somebody, I would argue, somebody who can follow the commandments. Somebody who doesn't hurt anybody. Because they follow the commandments, you know? Somebody who loves other people in spite of them persecuting you. You know, even, even when your name's being slandered and somebody's bearing false witness against you or, or somebody's committing adultery on you, you're being taken advantage of, you're being abused, you still hold fast to the truth. You still remain faithful and you follow the commandments, you know? Even to the point of death, you know? That's what makes a successful person. You know, somebody who can stare death right in the face and say, you know what? Do your worst. Do your worst to me because I'm, God considers me a success because I follow the commandments. And you, you're not my God. So do your worst. Anyways, you know, that's my message. I thank you all for listening. Um, and I encourage you all to uh, go out there and, 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 and fight the good fight, you know. Strive for true success, not this false American dream that we've been sold, which is a lie. It's a fake dream. It's a nightmare, really. The American nightmare, that's what I'm going to call it. But Sean, people are going to take care, take, take advantage of me. They're going to they're gonna take my kindness for weakness and, 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 and take advantage of me. Listen, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? You know, fear not him who can destroy your body. But fear him who can destroy both your body and your soul. You know, who cares what the world thinks is success? You guys now know the truth. 
you know what true success is, you know, so the choice is yours. Do you want to be success? Or do you want to chase the American nightmare? You decide. I'll give you guys the decision. And as usual, I'm going to give God the last word. So you guys have yourself a very wonderful day. Um, I'm going to read uh, from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament, chapter 1, verse number 8. The Bible reads, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. God bless.